Hello everyone, welcome you all in a video lecture series related to heat and mass transfer. We are dealing with the heat exchanger chapter. In the previous lecture, up till now, we have covered classification of heat exchanger and types of heat exchanger. Also, we have covered overall heat transfer coefficient and falling factor. Today, in this lecture, we are going to learn about heat exchanger analysis and LM3D method for parallel flow and counter flow. So what is meant by heat exchanger analysis? So we have to analyze the heat exchanger performance before we go for manufacturing. So for that purpose, the heat, total heat transfer from the heat exchanger is most important part of analysis. So this total heat transfer from the heat exchanger govern, uh, governing parameters are the first one is overall heat transfer coefficient and uh, second one is total surface area of heat transfer and the third one is nothing but inlet and outlet temperature conditions. So these three parameters should be considered while considering total heat transfer from the heat exchanger. For the understanding purpose here, we have considered uh, one parallel flow arrangement heat exchanger. Okay, so in a parallel flow, uh, two fluid flows in the same direction. Now, these two fluids are separated by a wall. Okay, so which will be considered as a heat transfer area, available heat transfer area. So uh, initially, the hot fluid having T suffix H1 temperature. So here H signifies the hot fluid and 1 signifies it is for an inlet. And it leaves the heat exchanger at a temperature of T suffix H2. In the same direction or from the same side, the cold fluid entered in a heat exchanger having temperature T suffix C1, where C signifies it is for a cold fluid and one signifies it is the inlet condition. In the same manner, the outlet temperature of cold fluid is T suffix C2. So 2 for the outlet condition. Now as these two fluids are flowing, the hot fluid transfer the heat to the uh, heat transfer area or this particular wall surface. Then this wall surface will transfer the heat to the cold fluid. Now hot fluid transfer the heat by convection mode to the wall surface. Within the wall surface heat transfer by conduction. Then wall will transfer the fluid uh, transfer the heat to the cold fluid by convection. Now we have to analyze this heat exchanger. Okay, so uh, here we are going to consider that. M dot is equal to mass flow rate of a particular fluid per and its unit is kg per second. So if you are considering the mass flow rate for the hot fluid then we have to give the suffix for M dot as M dot suffix H okay and if this mass flow rate for the cold fluid we have to consider as a M dot suffix C. Then Cp is the specific heat at a constant pressure. Its unit is joule per kg degree Celsius. Now Cp that is specific heat if you are considering for the hot fluid then it will become Cp suffix H and if this Cp we are considering for the cold fluid then it's, uh, it signifies as Cp suffix C. Then T is nothing but temperature of a fluid. Okay. Generally, T is nothing but temperature of fluid. Uh, for the hot fluid, we are give, providing T suffix H and for the cold fluid, we are providing T suffix C. Whereas 1 for the inlet condition and 2 for the outlet condition. Delta T is equal to temperature drop or rise of a fluid across the heat exchanger. The subscripts H and C stands for hot and cold fluid respectively. And also subscripts 1 and 2 refers to inlet and outlet conditions respectively. Now we have to assume 
that there is no heat loss to the surrounding okay as the heat exchanger is completely insulated so there is no heat loss to the surrounding and potential and kinetic energy changes are negligible so as we know that uh, from the energy balance equation when the hot flu hot fluid start flowing inside the heat exchanger its temperature goes on decreasing okay and because of heat transfer from hot fluid to the cold fluid and cold fluid temperature goes on increasing so we can write the energy balance equation for the heat transfer as heat given up by hot fluid is equal to q is equal to mass flow rate of a hot fluid specific heat of a hot fluid multiply by change in temperature of a hot fluid that is nothing but mass flow rate of a hot fluid is m dot suffix h specific heat of a hot fluid is cp suffix h multiply by change in temperature of a hot fluid is th1 minus th2 that will be the heat given by hot fluid to the cold fluid now the same manner same amount of heat will be received by the cold fluid so heat picked up by cold fluid can be written as q is equal to m dot c multiply by cpc multiply by tc2 minus tc1 so m dot c is the mass flow rate of a cold fluid cpc is the specific heat of cold fluid and tc2 minus tc1 is the uh, change in temperature of a cold fluid now here we have taken tc2 minus tc1 because the tc2 that is the outlet temperature of a cold fluid is greater than the inlet temperature of a cold fluid and here we have taken the th1 minus th2 because the inlet temperature of a hot fluid is greater than the outlet temperature of a cold uh, in outlet temperature of a hot fluid so uh, we know that this total heat transfer rate in heat exchanger can be written as q is equal to u multiplied by a multiplied by theta suffix e m where u is overall heat transfer coefficient between two fluids a is the effective heat transfer area and theta m is nothing but appropriate mean value of temperature difference or lmtd so here we have four temperatures okay two temperature for the hot fluid and two temperature for the cold fluid so we have to find out the mean temperature difference okay or logarithmic mean temperature difference so for that purpose we required to use a proper method to find out the mean temperature difference okay so here the general format of heat transfer in case of a heat exchanger can be written as q is equal to u multiply by a multiply by theta m where theta m is the approximate or appropriate temperature of a four temperature okay two inlet and two outlet temperature so we have to find out this theta m initially we discuss about the overall heat transfer rate okay now in this particular lecture uh, we uh, we are going to discuss about how to find out this particular uh, mean value of a temperature difference so uh, first method we are going to use the lmtd method that is nothing but logarithmic mean temperature difference now this method we are going to apply for two cases two flow arrangement the first one is the parallel flow arrangement of heat exchanger and second one is the counter flow arrangement of a heat exchanger so here we go for the lmtd method okay so lmtd is nothing but logarithmic mean temperature difference it define as the that temperature difference which if constant would give the same rate of heat transfer as actually occurs under variable conditions of a temperature difference so <clears throat> according to this definition if uh, if you calculate the lmtd for particular heat exchanger for particular temperature conditions for inlet and outlet then that lmtd will be same for all the temperature conditions okay for variable uh, temperature conditions okay 
so uh, this method uh, based uh, on some assumption so that assumption we need to consider before we are applying this lmtd method that is logarithmic mean temperature difference method for any heat exchanger so what are that assumptions the first one is overall heat transfer coefficient is constant okay so uh, in the last lecture we have calculated the overall heat transfer coefficient that overall heat transfer co coefficient will not change uh, with respect to time so it will be constant the flow conditions are steady so flow conditions means what uh, the its inlet temperature condition outlet temperature condition should not change with respect to time and its flow properties like uh, specific heat uh, the uh, density of a fluid should not change with respect to time for a particular position so that is nothing but the flow con uh, flow conditions are steady then the specific heats and mass flow rates of both fluids are constant so specific heat is nothing but cpc and cph for cold fluid and hot fluid and mass flow rate for cold fluid and hot fluid as m dot c and m dot h that should not change with respect to time okay both should be a constant there is no loss of heat to the surrounding due to the heat exchanger being perfectly insulated there is no change of phase either of the fluid during the heat transfer the changes in potential and kinetic energy are negligible axial conduction along the tubes of the heat exchanger as are negligible so axial condition conduction along the tube we have to consider as a negligible so this uh, seven assumption we need to consider while applying lmtd method for any heat exchanger now we are going to see the first application lmtd for lmtd for parallel flow okay so for that purpose we have considered one parallel flow arrangement heat exchanger okay so you can consider that this is the concentric tube or tube in tube heat exchanger okay so uh, 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 the one large tube is there and one uh, concentric tube is there okay so uh, through the smaller tube the hot fluid is flowing or through the inner tube the hot fluid is flowing and through the outer tube okay outer circular tube the cold fluid is flowing surrounding to the hot fluid tube okay <clears throat> the inlet temperature of a hot fluid is t suffix h1 and inlet temperature of cold fluid is t suffix c1 same as the outlet temperature of a cold fluid we need to consider as a t suffix h2 and outlet temperature of a uh, outlet temperature of a hot fluid we need to consider as a t suffix h2 and outlet temperature of a cold fluid we need to consider as a t suffix c2 now here the both the fluids are flowing in a same direction so the both the fluids are flowing in one direction only so we can say that this is the parallel flow arrangement now while flowing uh, through the heat exchanger hot fluid temperature will goes on reducing and cold fluid temperature will goes on increasing okay so uh, if you draw the the temperature difference or temperature distribution diagram for the parallel flow arrangement then uh, we will get this particular curves okay now uh, on the x axis we have taken the area and on the y axis we have taken the temperature okay so hot fluid temperature at the inlet uh, so we have consider that at the inlet uh, inlet should be on a same side and outlet on another side so from this side the hot fluid and cold fluid entered in a heat exchanger so for that purpose the inlet and uh, in inlet for cold fluid and outlet uh, inlet for cold fluid and inlet for hot fluid uh, temperatures we have considered on the same side only so the inlet temperature of a hot fluid is th1 okay and the inlet temperature of a cold fluid is tc1 okay as we are proceed over the heating surface area of a heat exchanger the cold fluid temperature goes on increasing and the hot fluid temperature goes on decreasing okay so 
so here we will get the at the outlet the TH2 temperature less than TH1 temperature and TC2 temperature greater than TC1 temperature. Okay, so initial temperature difference that is TH1 minus TC1 is uh, signifies as theta1. Okay, TH1 minus TC1 is nothing but theta1. Whereas the final temperature difference TH2 minus TC2 will be considered as a theta2. TH2 minus TC2 will be considered as a theta2. Now for uh, for the analysis purpose uh, we are going to consider one elemental area okay uh, from that complete area we have considered the small area for the analysis purpose so da area we have considered over here for the analysis purpose now the inlet temperature for this area we are going to consider as a, for a hot fluid t suffix h and for cold fluid t suffix c and the difference between this particular inlet temperature we are going to consider as a theta okay so theta is equal to th minus tc now as the hot fluid flows through that particular area its temperature goes on increasing uh, goes on decreasing and cold fluid temperature goes on increasing okay so the inlet and outlet temperature difference for hot fluid we have considered at uh, for this point and for this point for the starting point of a elemental area and for the end point of the elemental area so this is equal to this t suffix h dt suffix h that is the uh, change in temperature through that particular elemental area that we have considered as a dt suffix h whereas the cold fluid temperature goes on increasing when it flows over that particular elemental area da and its temperature increases from this point to this point by dt suffix c so change in temperature in a cold fluid we need to consider as a dt suffix c for this particular elemental area so uh, in this particular elemental area the dq amount of heat will be transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid okay dq amount of heat will be transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid so let us consider the elemental area da of the heat exchanger the rate of heat flow through this elementary area da of the heat exchanger is dq so this dq uh, equation we can uh, write down as dq is equal to u multiply by d a multiply by th minus tc where u is the overall heat transfer coefficient da is elementary area we have considered for the analysis purpose th minus tc is the uh, temperature difference at the inlet between the hot fluid and cold fluid so we can write the equation u multiply by da multiply by delta t so consider this equation number a now next is as a result of heat transfer dq through the area da the hot fluid is cooled by dt suffix h and the cold fluid heated up by dt suffix c okay so as we know as we consider the uh, diagram in that uh, while flowing the fluid over that particular elemental area the hot fluid temperature reduces by dt suffix h and cold fluid temperature increased by dt suffix c so the heat transfer equation by using the energy balance equation we can write the dq for the uh, hot fluid and for the cold fluid so the heat transfer over the elemental area dq can be written as heat lost by the hot fluid and is equal to heat gain by the cold fluid so heat loss by the hot fluid can be written as m dot suffix h multiplied by cp suffix h multiplied by dt suffix h minus sign should be there because as we flow over the length of heat exchanger the hot fluid loses its heat okay so the next temperature of the hot fluid will be uh, less than the previous temperature so dt suffix h will be negative so for that purpose here we have provided the negative sign as we flow 
uh, as we travel over the uh, length of heat exchanger the cold fluid temperature goes on increasing so for that purpose uh, there will not be negative sign for the heat gain by the cold fluid so m dot c multiply by cpc multiply by dt suffix c will be the heat gain by the cold fluid so where the dt suffix c is the heat gain uh, the temperature increase of the cold fluid due to heat transfer okay so that will be the energy balance equation for the for the heat exchanger so uh, from these two equations for the hot fluid and for the cold fluid we can write the equation for dt suffix h and dt suffix c so dt suffix h is equal to minus dq divided by m dot h multiply by cph now the mass flow rate multiply by specific heat will give us a heat capacity of a hot fluid okay will give us a heat capacity of a hot fluid so mass flow rate for the hot fluid multiply by uh, heat capacity uh, specific heat uh, of a hot fluid uh, will give us a heat capacity of a hot fluid so m dot h multiply by cph will be considered as a c suffix h so the dth equation will be minus dq divided by c suffix h and in the same manner if you arrange this equation for the cold fluid dq is equal to m dot c cpc multiplied by dtc then for the change in temperature of a cold fluid we will get the equation dt suffix c is equal to dq divided by m dot c multiplied by cpc where mass flow rate multiplied by specific heat is nothing but heat capacity so in this equation we will get the heat capacity for the cold fluid so dtc is equal to dq divided by c suffix c now next thing is nothing but we have to take the difference between the uh, change in temperature of a hot fluid and change in temperature of a cold fluid so dt suffix h minus dt suffix c is equal to we have uh, taken this to equation for the uh, for the sake of interest so minus dq divided by ch minus dq divided by cc okay so here the equation can be rearranged dt suffix h minus dt suffix c is equal to minus dq into bracket 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc so from this equation minus dq we have taken the common so as we know uh, the theta is equal to th minus tc okay theta is equal to th minus tc therefore d theta is equal to dt suffix h minus dt suffix c so here uh, if you take the differentiation of a theta then same differentiation we have to take for the hot fluid temperature and the cold fluid temperature so dq is equal to dt suffix h minus dt suffix c so uh, instead of dt suffix h minus dt suffix c we are going to write the d theta, uh, d theta. so d theta is equal to dt suffix h minus dt suffix c is equal to minus dq divided uh, multiply by into bracket 1 divided by ch plus 1 divided by cc so dq equation we already know that is the equation number a so from the equation number a we know that dq is equal to u multiply by da multiply by th minus tc okay so uh, we are going to put this equation instead of dq in that particular equation okay so d theta is equal to minus u multiply by da multiply by th minus tc into bracket 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc here we know that th minus tc is nothing but theta th minus tc is nothing but theta so uh, we are replacing th minus tc by theta then the equation will be uh, d theta is equal to minus u multiply by da multiply by theta into bracket 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc okay now we have shifted this theta on this side so the same terms will be on same side okay and next we have to integrate this particular equation so the equation becomes d theta divided by theta is equal to minus u multiply by da into bracket 1 divided by ch plus 1 divided by cc 
so integration should be taken over the uh, surface area okay so surface area changes from zero to total area okay as the uh, fluid flowing at the starting point the surface area available for the heat transfer is zero and as we proceed to the complete length of the heat exchanger then the total surface area available we have to consider uh, for the heat transfer so now integrate between the inlet and outlet condition from a is equal to zero to a is equal to a so at that time theta condition at when the area zero the theta becomes theta one and when a when we are reaching to the end of that particular heat exchanger the theta becomes theta two so uh, integration of theta we need to take from one to two okay from point one to two that is theta one to theta two uh, integration of d theta divided by theta with the limits uh, one to two we have to consider and uh, integration of this term we have to take from area a is equal to zero to a is equal to total area that is capital a so integration we have to take for this particular uh, terms minus u multiply by da into bracket one upon ch plus one upon cc now here u and this bracket is a constant so we have to take it as uh, outside of the integration sign and we have to integrate the uh, integrate only da so integration of d theta divided by theta with the limits one to two is equal to we have taken this constant outside and we have provided the integration sign to d a with the limit a is equal to zero to a is equal to a so integration of theta divided by theta is ln of theta okay ln of theta with the limits one to two and integration of d a is a with the limit zero to a now if you put upper limit and lower limit will get uh, ln of theta 2 minus ln of theta 1 is equal to minus u and if you put the upper limit and lower limit for the a it will becomes a minus 0 once again it will becomes a only so we will get minus u multiplied by a into bracket 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc now the equation becomes ln of theta 2 divided by theta 1 is equal to minus u multiply by a multiply by into bracket 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc okay so this is equation number 5 now next is nothing but uh, we know that the total heat transfer between the hot fluid and uh, the cold fluid is given by the heat transfer or heat loss by the hot fluid can be written as q is equal to m dot h multiply by cph into bracket th1 minus th2 okay so where m dot h multiply by cph is nothing but ch that is nothing but mass flow rate multiply by specific heat will gives you heat capacity okay so q is equal to heat capacity of a hot fluid multiply by uh, change in temperature of a cold fluid uh, change in temperature of a hot fluid that is nothing but th1 minus th2 okay therefore we will get the 1 upon ch value if you shift this ch on this side and q on this side so we'll get 1 upon ch is equal to th1 minus th2 divided by q in the same manner the whatever the heat loss by the hot fluid that much amount of heat will be gained by the cold fluid so heat gained by cold fluid can be written as q is equal to m dot c multiplied by cpc into bracket tc2 minus tc1 so therefore m dot c multiplied by cpc that is nothing but mass flow rate of a cold fluid multiplied by specific heat of a cold fluid will gives us uh, the heat capacity of a cold fluid so q is equal to cc multiplied by tc2 minus tc1 now if you shift this c sub c on this side and q on this side we'll get 1 upon c sub c is equal to tc2 minus tc1 divided by q now we have uh, find out the values of 1 upon ch and 1 upon cc just put up that values in equation number 5 will uh, the equation number 5 is uh, ln of theta 2 divided by theta 1 is equal to minus u multiplied by a into bracket 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc so uh, we have find out 1 upon ch and 1 upon cc so just put up that values or that equations instead of 1 upon ch and 1 upon cc 
so then we will get the equation ln of theta 2 divided by theta 1 is equal to minus u multiplied by a into bracket th1 minus th2 divided by q plus tc2 minus tc1 divided by q so uh, if you taken uh, the denominator is same so taken as common and taken outside of the bracket then the equation becomes minus u multiply by a divided by q into bracket th1 minus th2 plus tc2 minus tc1 now this negative sign we have taken inside the bracket then we will get minus th1 plus th2 minus tc2 plus tc1 now we have arranged this four terms in this manner the inlet condition we have taken in one bracket and outlet condition for the temperature we have taken in another bracket so first bracket will be minus th1 plus tc1 okay and the plus sign will be there and the second bracket will be th2 minus tc2 th2 minus tc2 so uh, we'll get the equation as u multiply by a multiply by theta into bracket minus in, into bracket uh, if you take the minus sign common from the first bracket we will get minus into bracket th1 minus tc1 plus th2 minus tc2 in the another bracket now from the figure we know that th1 minus tc1 is nothing but theta1 and th2 minus tc2 is nothing but theta2 so here the minus theta1 plus theta2 we will get so we if you arrange this then we will get theta2 minus theta1 so ln of theta2 divided by theta1 is equal to u multiplied by a divided by q into bracket theta2 minus theta1 okay so if you arrange this equation in a q format okay so if you arrange this equation in a q format then we will get the total heat transfer is equal to u multiply by a into bracket theta2 minus theta1 divided by ln of theta2 divided by theta1 so we know the general equation for the total heat transfer that is q is equal to u multiply by a multiply by theta m okay so u and a as it is so theta m is nothing but theta m is nothing but theta2 minus theta1 whole divided by ln of theta2 divided by theta1 here we have to remember theta1 is nothing but th1 minus tc1 and theta2 is nothing but th2 minus tc2 in case of a parallel flow arrangement so theta m is called as a logarithmic mean temperature difference can be written as theta2 minus theta1 divided by ln of theta2 divided by theta1 if you take the minus sign common from this particular numerator and same minus sign if, if you take common from the denominator we will get the equation as a theta1 minus theta2 divided by ln of theta1 divided by theta2 okay so uh, while dealing with the problems we have to remember that if you in the subtraction if you take theta2 first then uh, when while taking the log uh, on on the numerator you have to take theta2 and in the same manner if you take theta1 uh, first in numerator in subtraction then in the denominator for the log ln term we have to take theta1 as a numerator okay so this is the important equation and this is the final equation for the logarithmic mean temperature difference for parallel flow arrangement okay please remember this equation now in the next lecture we will see the logarithmic mean temperature difference applied for uh, counter flow arrangement okay thank you